Hey guys, Darkmakers5 here with a Cinema 4D tutorial. Um, you would have just seen the intro that we we're making today before the video started. We will be using poly effects. You will learn how to use fracture tools and to make a nice setting, as you can see. So let's begin. First, we'll have to make a new, a new composition, I guess. And go up to MoGraph, MoText to make your text. You'll ch we'll choose our font. I'm going to go with Impact. This is completely your choice. Type in what it, whatever you want. I'm going to just go with Dark. And set the alignment to middle. So the anchor point is in the middle. Once you have done that, set the depth to 100 and the subdivision to 10 or 14. Then go to the caps tab and we will set a fillet cap or fillet cap either way on both start and end. Make the radius 10 and uh, end radius 10 as well we are done for that copy and paste this motext for this one make these both 0 so it, right now you should have one motext with 10 for both and one for 0 for both once you have this get to the motext with 10 for start and end and make the depth 50 so as you can see this is what you should end up with and move us into the middle of the other motex with eyesight. That should so it gives it a bit bevel effect. Okay. Now we'll add some. Now we will make a plate, a plane. Go to coordinates and just bump that up to max or just really high until. It reaches most of, most of the screen. As you can see, this will be your floor. You type in F4 to align it in this angle. I will do it now. So you have your floor. Now we will make our materials. Make a new material. I'm going to, for this tutorial, I will just use a dark grey, close to black. And I will use a lighter grey, closer to white. I'll, I'm going to make the floor the dark grey, this part of the text grey, and bevel, the bevel part white, as you can see. Now we will add a light to give it a a better, better look, I guess, make a more professional look. You can zoom out and place this wherever you want. I'm just going to place it to the right side, right of screen, like so. Zoom in and set the general. Go to general tab and set the shadow to shadow maps soft, and the visible light to a. To not, none actually, just leave that none. That should get, give us a nice shadow effect and make the floor smooth. If you want a better effect than this, you can go further and make copy this material, the black material, and to the copied material add a reflection and bring down the brightness to about. 15. You could also add a reflection to the white. This will add and, and drag the reflected black onto the floor. So I can sort of, if you can sort of tell by there, turn that up a little bit actually. 30. I can see it kind of. That's very, very nice. 
looking text now to to actually keyframing and adding the poly effects to this to this text so first thing you have to do is get a fracture object so you go to mo MoGraph fracture select both the both mo text and drag it into fracture after you have done this go to mo, mo graph again and pick poly effects make poly effects put drag poly effects into fracture and then we'll start we will start changing the settings you will go to fall off let's go to linear and down here in orientation you have to change from plus Z or plus Z to mi minus X make sure it is linear as well and for the spline make a just choose a preset from spline presets and choose square now we can add a now we can Go to MoGraph, while selected poly effects. Click on go on effectors and the random effector. This go to coordinates and change these to sorry. Go to um, parameter and change the position px p dot x p dot y position z basically to about a thousand centimeters thousand five hundred to whenever you feel it's, it's enough I guess I'll just drag it up to a good amount I think that should do you can also change the rotation so while the effects are coming into each other they will rotate and not just look boring I guess that is with that. That is all for the random effector. Now we now we will have to have to keyframe the poly effects. As you can see, when you move it up and down, because we set it to linear, it will form and deform as you move it. As you can see. So to keyframe, all you have to do is move it up to one point. We'll just choose one. Get click on the keyframing button at zero frames move it to 90 and drag this down until you can see your text then click the keyframing key button once more this will add the keyframe as you can see it makes itself there you go if you would like to go one step further you will add a we can add a camera to give it a nice panning effect if not you can leave this video now thanks for watching for those who stayed we shall now add a camera so go to this and click on it once when on the camera click on this little button twice and then basically or it's in and just zoom out now we'll have to keyframe the camera. To do this, it is basically the same as keyframing the poly effects, except you have to rotate it as well. As you can see, we will start here. Right now, we add a keyframe. And then towards the end, move it to the position that you would like it to end in I will just make it end in this position like this see what that looks like and then when you like the position just click on the keyframing once more this will add the panning effect And your intro with poly effects is complete. To render this, you can go to your render settings, which is the third one here. Save. 
I usually save it as a PNG, PNG or a JPEG. You can save it as a QuickTime movie and completely render it as one file. But I save it as a PNG that imports all the images into After Effects. It's up. It's purely up to you what you want. And yeah, make sure you you choose the preset HDTV 1080, or you can go with or you can go with a 720, which is a small file. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment. Tell me what you would like to see. What you don't like. What what um what you do like what you want more of all that and see you guys later